Well, as you can see here, the cucumbers have taken lovely and the, um, the bell peppers have actually started to sprout. So it was just that they took off at a different time, that's all as you can see there. So yeah, they're coming up, so we're gonna have some bell peppers as well. And as you can see there, the uh, runner beans are looking very good now. They're getting ready to put their center core out and they'll be soon ready to be planted out because they'll uh, be able to go up, up cane. So we'll be doing that very shortly. I've temporarily slung a, a cover ground sheet over all that greenery down there. It's still not leveled off, but it's just going to give me the opportunity to hold things back whilst I'm doing other things as well. Now there you can see the potatoes. This one's here, for example, very near me having to build up the earth and actually cover the lower leaves up again. There's the other one. They've come up. They've actually all come up now, but these ones ain't ready yet, I don't think, to, to be earthed up. These ones, again, definitely not ready to be earthed up. But obviously these ones are. So yeah, the potatoes are doing well and it won't be long. Probably in the next couple of days, I suppose, I'll probably earth these up. Okay, here we are, we've uh, got the glass jars. Right, basically they've been washed out and you, they've been put in the oven and, uh, on 160 degrees to sterilize them. Yeah. So they're just drying Ten off minutes, there. Yeah. Right, we've actually gone out, as you know, we've picked a kilogram, kilogram of blackberries and Sharon's actually just washed these at the moment. So what are we actually gonna do now, Sharon? I'll tip them in the pot. Right, so there's a kilogram of blackberries. We've never done this one before with blackberries. Right, so we're just going to get how, how much how much caster sugar? Kilogram. That's a kilogram of caster sugar, basically, and a kilogram of actual berries as well. So that goes in the pot. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. So in goes two tablespoons of lemon juice. And a pinch of salt. and just a little bit of salt there. So that's the actual mixture and that's all we've got now. So that gets taken over to the, the uh, cooker. And just bring it to stir continuously to the, bring it to the bowl for 15 minutes. You don't have no water at all? No, nothing. So you literally stir all the ingredients up continuously and you actually bring it to the boil. For 15 minutes. For 15 minutes, that's a slow boil. So don't forget you must keep the, the, the uh, mixture moving at all times. Right, well as you can see, Sharon's got it on a high heat at the moment and this is literally about five minutes, so as you can see, everything breaks down nicely. I thought you might have needed to put some fluid in there, but um, Sharon said no, and obviously within five minutes, all the berry juice actually breaks down as we've got what, what we've got now. So, there you go. 
Now again, because we're actually bringing this mixture to the boil, and it's obviously containing a lot of sugar, it's very easy to burn sugar. So, although we're doing this in uh, just a pot we've got available, if you're doing this on a regular basis, it's probably advisable to get a jam pot. Now jam pots have got a thick bottom on them, and in other words, the heat doesn't concentrate in one place, so there's little risk of you actually burning the actual uh, the jam as you're making it with, with the sugar eating up. So that is why you have so-called jam pots with a thick base so that you don't actually overheat the actual uh, sugar inside and you, you don't run the risk of it burning. So jam pots are a good idea if you're doing this. But as I say, we're just being very careful and making sure that it's being stirred all the time so we don't get no uh, hot spots on the bottom, bits stuck to the bottom. Well, I don't know if you can actually see this. This is the uh, strawberry jam that um, Sharon made yesterday. There's a couple of jars there. One, one's gone for somewhere else, Sharon, isn't it? Two. Two. So out of a kilogram of strawberries, you made four jars. And um, obviously we've kept two. And as you can see, it's been dated there on the lid there. But as you can see, this is, I'm not going to open it up because it's uh, been sealed. But sipping it up, it's a lovely consistency. Look, it's really set well. And that is due to the pectin in the fruit I gather and that thickens it up naturally so there's no thickening agents in that at all so hopefully the um, the black currant will go the same way so as I say that's the pectin in the fruit I think that thickens it up but you've got to get the jam up to a certain temperature when you're boiling it but I gather that the, sh the sugar that Sharon used yesterday was what they call jam sugar she's got the packet there and in that apparently you actually get pectin that's what she made the strawberry jam with yesterday so there's actually pectin in that sugar there but today we've just used caster sugar and there's no pectin in it at all so we're hoping that the pectin in the blackberries is going to set the uh, jam like it did with the other one right well as you can just see now we're just bringing it up to the boil now it's not going to go up and over is it so she's just lowered it for her to a simmer and as you can see there it's coming up it's actually lovely it's boiling now so what I've actually got here is my old um, thermometer gun as you know you've probably seen me use this before and I'm just going to test the temperature of the actual fluid as you can see there it's about 89 to 93 degrees you've got to get that up to about 105 degrees apparently we've just read the recipe again you either stir it for 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes uh, with a rolling boil as we're doing here or until it reaches 105 degrees C. So we'll just keep testing it until we actually reach that temperature. Right, we've been going for about five to eight minutes now, so we're just gonna see what the temperature says. So Sharon's just gonna bring some up from the bottom. Right, well as you can see there, we've got a temperature of 104.5. So that's near enough what we want to do. So, right, so what we're gonna do now then is, as it says throughout the, in the recipe, fill the jar. So don't forget, this fluid is absolutely boiling hot. So just be very, very careful and we're going to take it up to about a centimetre below the surface so we're just going to fill these up now and again the the, the, uh, the mixture looks very runny at the moment but um, apparently the pectin in them will start to set it once it starts to cool down <laughs> So we've given the glasses and the room is a good clean up as well. And Sharon's just going to place a little wax disc on the top of each jam. Now don't forget people, these are very, very hot. We've been handling them, but we've taken great care. This, this fluid is like just off a of boiling basically, so you've got to be really careful. There we go, so on with the lids. And then these stand in a bath of water. Cold water, just to set. Some more water in and basically, once they reach room temperature and they've cooled right down, they're they're ready to store. But there you go. That's just the uh, produce from our garden. Our first real produce from our blackberry bushes. But every year we've had these come out and we've done nothing with them. So we've made six pots of lovely jam there. So we've also got the strawberry jam, which two of them have been given away, as we said here. Well, we're just showing you that we can do it. Anyone can do this. If you've got a little plot of land on your 
garden or even if you've got a window box or balcony or whatever anyone could do anything like this making food from garden produce well there we go we've had a little go we've made this ourselves hope you enjoyed this video we'll do a few more once we grow some more vegetables at the moment this is all we've got to go on so just say hello Sharon bye Sharon see you later hope you enjoyed the video Oh. Yeah. <laughs>